This is a Dude Studios production. And hey, I'm the Dude. Hey, bartender. Hey, bartender. Pass me a drink. Pass me a drink. A reason that I'm here. Welcome back to Hey Bartender Podcast, the only bar right now that you can go to that you don't have to wear a mask. How's everybody doing tonight? Let's see. Oh, it's uh, Saturday. It's seven o'clock, at least when I posted this. Uh, it's, you know, just another week gone by. Hopefully everybody's doing good. Everybody's staying safe. Hopefully some of you, a majority of you at least are back at work. I've been hearing a lot of stuff about people that are getting their bars back going. And, you know, I just want you guys to get get back to making your money and having a little bit of fun behind the bar. Because, you know, that's what it's all about, isn't it? Uh, having a little bit of fun and making that money. So, anyway, to get this show started, we got to start off with the drink special, like always. So, this one I stole from uh, the Fraternal Order of Bartenders Facebook page. Uh, Amanda Sledge posted this, and it sounded pretty interesting. Uh, she said she made up a frozen drink tonight at home because uh, it's Saturday night and her bar got destroyed by a tornado five months ago. Sorry to hear that, Amanda. Uh, this drink that she has invented is called the Mother of All Dra- uh, the Mother of Dragons. I was going to go full Game of Thrones on you there for a second, but it's just called the Mother of Dragons. Ingredients goes as this. Two ounces of Smirnoff green apple, two an- ounces of Prosesco, Pro- Prosesco, Pros- Prosecco, okay. One cup of frozen dragon fruit pieces, four ounces of watermelon juice. You uh, put that all in a blender. It's okay to use your blender at home because you don't. Uh, you can clean it later. You don't have to clean it right away. You blend that motherfucker and put that into the proper glass. Put uh, three to four mint leaves on top of that and enjoy. Um, and uh, she, I'm going to post the picture that she has of, the, uh, of it in a pint glass. She says it's a te- test glass, but it looks good the way it is. I've never been a really big fan of tornado glasses. I always broke those fuckers. But uh, thank you, Amanda, for allowing me, whether you liked it or not, to steal your drink and put it on Hey Bartender Podcast. I'm giving you all the credit that I possibly can. If you have a drink out there and you want to, um, me to talk about it on Hey Bartender Podcast, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, just email it to me, dude, at heybartenderpodcast.com, and I'll talk about it on the show. Tell them about where who, who it came from and where you work so that everybody that listens to this podcast can go and enjoy your drink at your bar. And I want you all to remember this episode of Hey Bartender Podcast is brought to you by bartenderszonecoffee.com. Go to bartenderszonecoffee.com and find yourself a large selection of of different coffees, different brews that you can try out and get your morning wake-up juice. But they're also available in K-Cups. They're available in uh, standard ground, espresso ground, or just whole bean if you're the type of person that likes to grind your own stuff. Head over to bartenderszonecoffee.com and enjoy your morning wake-up juice today. So, this episode I decided to talk about some of the things that I used to do uh, after closing time, because, uh, you know, a lot of bartenders, uh, I don't know if it's any secret, but sometimes we don't leave right away. I mean, it's not like these uh, regular nine to five assholes that think that they're better than us, uh, you know, where as soon as the clock strikes five o'clock, they're grabbing their purse and then running out the door. Sometimes for us, it's a bit, there's a bit of a cool down time, isn't there? Now, uh, one, uh, one of the bars, uh, the first bar that I worked at, there was really, uh, none of that because I was a banquet bartender. And as soon as the banquet was cleaned up, everything was all sorted away. It, uh, we all went, we all went home except one particular night. Uh, it was new year's Eve. I, uh, we, I had just bartended a huge new year's Eve party. And, uh, as we were cleaning up, uh, the manager decided, let's uh, everybody have uh, some champagne because uh, we all didn't get to have a New Year's toast. Everybody else did, but uh, we were all busy bussing tables. I was busy behind the bar, throwing, slinging drinks right and left. But the manager was actually really cool to uh, pour us all 
a glass of champagne, toast the new year, and I think it was 1999 is uh, uh, the new year. And, uh, you know, that was kind of cool, but we do, none of us really hung out with each other. Uh, at least I didn't hang out with anybody that worked there. Uh, because as soon as we were done doing a banquet, putting the tables away, putting the chairs away, putting the walls away in some cases, uh, we were just too tired. We just said, screw this, going home. And I, uh, I, I'm sure that some of the uh, bartend, bartenders, waitresses, servers, whatever, they might have went over to one of the nearby bars in town and maybe had a quick one before going home or hung out with their friends or uh, something like that, but I wasn't really the type. But my next job, uh, I got at a real bar. I was actually working behind a bar as a real bartender. Now, uh, I didn't have anybody really hanging out. As soon as I said last call, people stopped ordering drinks. And as soon as I took the glasses away, pretty much everybody was gone. And so as soon as uh, I checked the bathrooms, make sure nobody's hanging out in there, uh, I uh, walk around, just make sure nobody's hiding out. I lock the doors and I can uh, get started on, oh, well, I'd already pretty much started on cleaning up the bar uh, just to get ahead of everything because, uh, you know, it's a lot of glassware that you have to clean up, a lot of dishes you have to clean up. And not to mention you have to get uh, get everything sorted and ready to go for the morning. If, so if I was too busy during my shift to cut fruit to make sure the next person that uh, bartends the next morning has the fruit tray full, ready to go, I had to stay stay an extra, extra half hour to cut fruit, put glassware away, restock beer. Um, the majority of that stuff I would get done before uh, even I yelled last call, just because sometimes I would uh, have the time. But, you know, you do have those really busy nights where you don't really have the time. So you have to stick around a little bit and make sure that that gets all done uh, before you leave. Now, when I was bartending by myself, uh, usually during the week, because on Fridays and Saturdays, there were two bartenders on duty, uh, myself and Shannon. And so a lot of stuff got done quickly and easily. Uh, But before... Uh, uh, before that, uh, before Shannon got hired at that uh, particular bar, I was closing the bar by myself and I didn't have a dishwasher. I didn't have a cook. So everything was pretty much done by me. Dishes were fairly easy because all I had to do was just leave them in the sink. They were all always really cool about that. Yeah, but I had to make sure, even though I was, uh, I missed a couple every now and then, just because it was really fucking dark back there behind the poker machines. I used to miss the occasional glass that was hidden behind a poker machine and get in trouble for it. Uh, and uh, because when they opened up the poker machines the next morning to get the uh, previous day's take out of it, they'd knock over the glass. And I, I tried to use the excuse, well, you didn't see it either until it fell over. But they... They didn't take that very well, but this is about, uh, uh, after hours now, you know, this isn't like insomniac with David tell, even though I loved that show. Um, there were, uh, there were times where I would just have the TV on, I'd keep one TV on for myself, just a little bit of noise in the background. And every once in a while, the jukebox, uh, I'd forget to turn it off because no music was playing, uh, when, uh, all the customers left and then all of a sudden a song would come on and scare the living shit out of me. But uh, majority of the time, the jukebox goes off. I turn on the TV, have a little Comedy Central going just because it was the only thing that had something uh, on at the time that I was even slightly interested in. Because I, uh, I was t- already by that time tired of watching ESPN or uh, didn't want to watch the news. It, it, so I put it on Comedy Central. And it kept me entertained, laughing as I'm running back and forth, getting the glasses back up into the cooler, uh, restocking the beers, uh, uh, counting out my till. But there was one night where uh, I was by myself. And this isn't a uh, ghost story. Uh, If you guys remember, I did a, a podcast about ghost stories. And I... uh 
the bar that I worked at did have a ghost. His name was Phil, but he never bothered me. And uh, so at least not that I'm aware of. I mean, there was one night where I dropped a glass and somehow a shard made it into my forearm. I could have blamed him for it, but really it was because I picked up too many glasses at one time and dropped one. And that pissed me off, let me tell you. But one night, uh, I'm uh, almost done. Uh, the bar, I got the last customer out at 1.30, and it's about 2.15. And I've almost got everything sorted out. I got my uh, drop put in the safe and uh, finished wiping down the bar, putting all the chairs up. And then I look up and I see that Weird Al Yankovic's movie UHF comes on the TV. A classic movie, if you ask me. And it it starts off with that scene where it's the parody of Raiders of the Lost Ark where uh, he walks into the jungle. He's got the Indiana Jones hat and jacket on and, uh, you know, the whole bullwhip scene in the beginning. And and I th- I'm standing there thinking to myself, well, I'm done. Um I haven't seen UHF in a really long time. And it, at that time, it wasn't available uh, to buy on uh, VHS because 19, 1999 VHS was still available. Uh, DVDs were out there, but they were extremely expensive and only uh, limited titles were on DVD. And so I haven't seen UHF in a really long time. I want to watch it because I didn't have cable uh, at home. So I decided... I'm going to sit and watch it. So I sat on a, uh, I sat at a table and put my feet up on to, on a, onto a chair. I had a drink. It was a Coke, but because, uh, let's face it, I'm no fun. Um, you know, had my pack of cigarettes, an ashtray, a Coke, and I just sat there, relaxed, and I sat and watched UHF just because I love that movie. And... If those of you who haven't haven't seen UHF, I'm sure everybody and their brother knows who Weird Al Yankovic is because he's been making musical parodies since the early 80s. And uh, finally, somebody came up to him and said, we got this movie idea, and he decided to do it. And I'm a huge fan of Weird Al Yankovic. I'm, uh, I think he's brilliant, uh, great lyricist, uh, and his original songs are really good, too. Not just as parodies, uh, although his parodies are the ones that get the most um, get the most recognition, just because uh, everybody knows the song and they just uh, like to laugh about certain things about it. I Weird Al Yankovic has a great career, mostly because to me he has a great career, mostly because um, people think of it as an honor for him to do a parody of their songs. He's got brilliant musicians that work has been working with with him since the early '80s, and uh, I think it was, I think he was talking about like the bare naked ladies. He he called them up and asked them, "Hey, can you mind if I do a parody of your song one week?" And they're like, "We've been waiting for this our whole career. You know, screw the Grammy. Where's our parody? That you know." And so most of the time, he's uh, very well loved and uh, liked in the music industry. Sure. He had trouble with certain artists out there. We all know the whole story behind, uh, that he got, uh, him and Coolio weren't, uh, on good terms about gangsters paradise. But I read recently that Coolio actually admitted, you know, that was actually probably the best thing that ever happened to that song. Uh, cause it kept the song relevant a lot longer than it probably should have. And, uh, you know, uh, but and he never touched Prince. Prince told him, "I don't want you to do a parody of any of my music." And Weird, Weird Al Yankovic stuck with that because he is genuinely a nice guy. And uh, you know, he very politely said, "Okay, uh, I won't do it. Thank you anyway." And uh, if you know anything about copyright law, he really doesn't have to ask permission about doing parodies of any kind of music. All you need to do is buy the mechanical rights to it, and you can do whatever you want with it. Uh, doesn't need to get the artist's permission, but Weird Al Yankovic used to like, uh, or still does, like to go through the artist just t- to make sure that everything's cool. You know, he doesn't want to burn bridges. He doesn't want to make enemies. He's just genuinely a nice guy. I used to have conversations about him with some of the, uh, uh, some of my bar customers 
who are also musicians, uh, this, this one guy named Rusty, uh, there was a rumor floating around town that he used to be the drummer for Foghat, but he he wasn't fooling me. But Rusty and I could talk about rock and roll music all night long. And uh, we I asked him one day, so what are your thoughts on Weird Al Yankovic? And he says, fucking brilliant. He's fucking brilliant. There's no two ways about it. And so we talked about Weird Al Yankovic. And since I was going along with his whole story that he was a member of Foghat, uh, I asked him if Weird Al Yankovic ever approached them about doing a parody. And he's, he said, yeah, but the lyrics weren't appropriate. And so I figured that he was lying because I don't think I've ever heard of Weird Al Yankovic making a inappropriate lyric song since he knows his uh, he knows his fan base is basically kids. So, but anyway, uh, I didn't mean to go into a whole Weird Al Yankovic rave, but he is he he is somebody that I greatly look up to in the music in the entertainment in industry. But it was kind of fun uh sitting back watching a movie at the bar just relaxing nobody around me no noise just me the tv and if i was and if i remembered to turn off the jukebox no music all of a sudden turned on and scared the living shit out of me that you know that's just one of those things but on the nights where i i didn't work alone saturdays and sundays uh, uh when pretty much the entire crew had to come in and work my Shannon, uh, Shannon and I work Friday nights. And then, uh, for a while it was just me on Saturday nights. Then they brought in another bartender, Jim to work with me on Saturday nights. Um, on the, uh, on Fridays and Saturday nights, a lot of, uh, we'd all close, uh, we'd have, uh, two bartenders, one waitress. And, uh, sometimes we'd go over, uh, uh, over to the next bar over that uh they stopped serving at 1 30 but stayed open until uh stayed open until 2 30 if we called our order in before 1 30 they hooked us up so we uh we'd call our order in and then head over uh, head over to boston's barb would hook us up with uh our drinks and we'd have until 2 30 to drink them which was never really a problem and uh that was usually kind of fun, but after that, uh, we'd generally, uh, all of us would stand there and decide, uh, you know what, don't want to go home yet. You know, the in in the cases of the people with families, they're like, the kids are asleep, uh, I'll just be awake for another couple hours watching the nanny, and, uh, you know, I I just don't want to go home yet. So we'd all end up going over to the nearby Denny's and, uh, you know, have an omelet at uh, three o'clock in the morning or uh, something to that effect. That was generally a lot of fun uh, because uh, we'd all to sit there, talk about our nights, uh, things that happened, uh, thank each other for the phone calls for, uh, you know, because there was a rowdy customer out running around and, you know, it was just so we didn't have to, uh, n- none of us got in trouble. We all looked out for each other on that end of town. Now on the other end of town, uh, the bar that was over there, they didn't do shit for us. And, uh, so we pretty much, we were nice to them. I'd say, uh, we, uh, Sometimes we'd alert them of uh, rowdy people in town, but then they'd generally ignore us. And they they would actually send rowdy people from their bar, purposely send rowdy people from their bar over to our bar. And so we never really got into talking with them or hanging out with them. But the camaraderie between the bar that I worked at and Boston's, uh, you know, all of us were good friends. And uh, we talked about each other's families when we'd go out uh, for breakfast in the morning, uh, breakfast in the morning uh, or dead late at night is actually awesome. I don't, I don't care what anybody thinks pancakes um, late night pancakes or an omelet. Uh, I, I love the shit out of that, but uh, we all had, uh, we all developed a camaraderie between each other to the point where we would celebrate each other's birthdays together. We would uh, uh, go out 
do things together. It, it was just, uh, you know, good friends and hanging out with late at night after your, after your shift with good friends is always a good feeling. I don't care who you are, that it's always a good feeling. That's why the customers show up because they just got off work and they want to hang out where good friends are. And, uh, bartenders and servers don't get that kind of hangout. We can't technically, um, you know, sit down and have a drink at a bar after our shift technically, but, uh, we, we can go over to the nearby diner and just sit, tell jokes, make each other laugh or, you know, just talk things through. And it, that was always a lot of fun, but on nights where, uh, like Shannon and I work together, I'm going to get, uh, one of these days I'm going to get her back on the show because, uh, we have some good stories of, uh, hanging out afterwards. Um, Shannon used to invite me over to her house and, uh, for, uh, late night snack. And so I, since I, uh, she loved her Chardonnay and I don't really drink cause I had to drive quite a ways, quite a ways to get home every night. So I really didn't drink. Uh, we'd go over to her place and she would make me what I consider the best grilled cheese ever. The best because she used Tillamook cheddar. She used San Francisco sourdough and she put lots of butter on it and then fry that up uh, or grill it up. And the thing was a certifiable gut bomb and, but it was so delicious and you know, with the Tillamook sharp cheddar and uh, you know, it was just crunchy and, uh, it, yeah, I can't say enough about it. It was just awesome sandwiches, but Sh- Shannon and I, uh, on the nights where we were both pretty sure that we couldn't, uh, we weren't going to go to sleep or we got home early enough. Cause we just knocked out the side work really fast. We'd go over to her house, sit, talk, or watch a movie. And the fun part about it, uh, was she and I would, uh, uh, get our tips together. You know, we both take out our own crown Royal bags and then, uh, we didn't count our money at the bar, but we'd take it over to her place and count it there. And so we both dump our money out onto the floor and we stack our quarters and then we get all of our singles together. And the name of the game was to only by pinching, um, pinching the wad of ones, it, Cause it only had to be ones. If you threw a five or a 20, that throws off the count. Um, but you take your wad of ones, you hand it to the other person and say, uh, and they have to guess how many ones are in that, uh, in their hand. Now we never did a bet where if you guess the number right within $5, you get the thing because we were both broken. We couldn't afford to lose that, but, uh, it was just a fun game just between two of us. So, uh, when we would play, she was always within two or three dollars scared the crap out of me it was amazing and me i'm sitting there holding and i'd be off by like 20 but she uh she had been in the bartending business for so long that she'd handled money so much that she uh could get reasonably close to whatever dollar amount that i handed her it was incredible it's like i i'd have $78 $78 and she'd just sit there, shake it. She wouldn't fan it, but she'd sit there, hold it, shake it a little bit and say $75. And I'm like, Jesus, 78. And she's like, Oh, I'm off. And I'm just like, you're acting like it's no big deal. You got within three, three dollars of just holding that. That's creepy. But like I said, Shannon had spent a lot of time in the bar industry and handled a lot of money. And so, you know, the, realize that she has a talent like that really doesn't surprise me anymore. I bet, uh, I bet she might be a little bit out of practice. She hasn't been behind the bar, but well, uh, uh, you know what? I think I bet that, uh, she would be able to do it. Maybe one of these days when I'm back visiting her, I'll, uh, hand her a wad of cash and say, how much is that? And see what happens. I'll let you guys know. Uh, if I remember, uh, but later on, you know, as, uh, as you move on in jobs, careers, for whatever reason, whether you got fired or whether you, 
uh, you quit or whatever. In my case, I got fired. Uh, I moved on to a different bar, Boston's, where um, uh, Shannon and I would hang out, and my friend Barb would be bartending. She got me a job there. And uh, eventually it turned into one night a week because I ended up getting a job for the uh, stuffing local newspapers at the uh, production facility. But one night a week, uh, the manager was nice enough to give me one bar shift. And uh, I ended up developing a, a better friendship. I mean, he and I talked from time to time when I was working at uh, the other bar. But I developed a good friendship with my cook. Uh, his name's Eric. And uh, he is very much a pop culture junkie. Uh, he is a literal encyclopedia of information, whether it's pop culture or news or uh, anything. He had good head on his shoulders. Uh, he was busy going to, going to school and working and uh, paying bills, uh, going back to school. Uh, uh, he But he generally enjoyed himself while he worked there. He made a lot of friends, but he and I developed a uh, good rapport where he would stick around uh, at the end of my shift. Part of me thinks it's because uh, the manager realized that I would forget things from time to time and I need a little help and just, you know, and so which ended up him just he and I BSing all night long uh, about whether it's pop culture, whether or what kind of crap's going on in our lives at that point in time. I remember uh, talking to him. Uh, he received the opportunity to go to Japan and uh, because one of our customers uh, was or is a English teacher. He uh, he goes between uh, Japan and America, brings, uh, brings over uh, Japanese students to experience America, and then he goes back to Japan and teaches English. Uh, I rumor has it one of his students was actually Ichiro Suzuki, but uh, he uh, he be, uh, he became a regular customer of mine when I worked at the previous bar. But he start he also showed up at Boston's when I worked there. Um, Eric uh, made a good friend out of him, and the guy all of a sudden offered him one day, "Hey, you want to go to Japan? I'll take you. Uh, just." All you have to do is take two weeks off of work. You come out. I'll show you the sites. You know, you can do whatever you want. And Eric was, you know, kind of mulling it over. He is like, you know what? I don't know if I should go. I don't know if I can um, really afford it. And I said, dude, how many people in your life get an opportunity to go on a trip like that? Majority of you people out there that work in the service industry, unfortunately, we do not possess the kind of money in order to take extravagant vacations. So I sat there that night and convinced him, this is a tremendous opportunity to see a different land, to experience a different culture. By all means, take it. And whatever you need to do, as a friend, I will help you. And uh, he was like, okay, yeah, I think I'll do it. And uh, I don't know if I was actually the one that gave him the final thought. Okay, yeah, this is going to happen. But I think I helped. And he also came up with this idea where uh, he wanted to borrow $5 from everybody he knew so that he could um, go there and feel financially secure. Because uh, as a cook at a restaurant, you're not exactly financially secure. Let's admit it even even a bartender or server if you were to take two weeks in a row off with no supplemental income like a spouse so he uh he approached me like he did everybody else and said uh, okay here's the deal i want to borrow five dollars from all my friends so uh and i think i gave him 20 and a couple of a couple other of his close friends did the same thing so we just wanted to make sure that uh he had a good time and had to enjoy that great opportunity. And it was because of a late night conversation after hours uh, that we were able to talk it through and really uh, figure out what to do, uh, what he could do and what he could afford. It's uh, And when he got back, he had a great time. 
He told me about everything he got to see, everything he got to experience. And uh, Ron, our uh, uh, our good customer, uh, did everything he could for him to make sure that he had a great time. Uh, and, you know, I said now, when he got back, I said, now, if you decided not to go, how much would you have regretted it? And he goes, oh, I would have totally regretted it. And I said, well, I'm glad you went because, you know, we're all friends. Uh, bartenders, cooks, servers, when we're in the restaurant industry, we're all family. That's uh, We help each other out. We talk each other through things. Good times, bad times, you name it, we're there for each other. Unless we really, uh, unless we really hate the new person. But either the new person leaves or they eventually realize, oh, okay, uh, these people are weird, so I've got to be weird too. So yeah, that's how that goes. Okay, people, it's time to take a quick break. First of all, I'd like to remind you all to go check out bartendersowncoffee.com. Go check out their selection and pick out the morning wake-up juice that you need to get your day going right now. Head on over to bartendersowncoffee.com. Use promo code FIRSTCUP and get 20% off your entire order. Next up on Hey Bartender Podcast is the musical portion, the part that I enjoy a lot. Uh, this week on Hey Bartender Podcast, my guest is Lydia Loveless from Columbus, Ohio. She has a new album coming out on September 25th, 2020, available on bandcamp.com called Daughter. And this is a single from that album. From the album Daughter, this is Lydia Loveless with the single Love Is Not Enough. Talk to me. Tell me how it feels to always see everything in a major key when I'm drowning in ennui. Cause all I do is try to conjure up a little sun for you. And when it doesn't come, you ask why the sky ain't blue. And things show. Love is not enough I want 
from her upcoming album, Daughter. That was Lydia Loveless with Love Is Not Enough. If you want to listen to more of Lydia Loveless, get on to Bandcamp.com. You can catch all of her albums, all of her singles. The album Love Is Not Enough will be available on Bandcamp.com in its entirety on September 25th, 2020. Uh, right now, you can go and download Love Is Not Enough and uh, check out other things while you're on Bandcamp.com. They got a lot of great stuff there. Anyway, the final thing that I'm going to talk about real quick uh, about what happens after the bar closes for a bartender, at least, uh, for a single bartender that uh, didn't have any roommates, didn't uh, have a girlfriend, uh, you know, it's uh, it comes down to the drive home. Now, the drive home can be, uh, you know, you can depending on how your night went, it can be a whole bunch of different things. If the night was good, you drive home with a smile on your face. If the night was bad, you drive home fuming. Uh, if the night was indifferent, you just kind of sit there. Uh, and depending on how far you have to drive, the only thing to keep you company right there is the radio. Uh, whether you listen to CDs, you listen to uh, NPR, a podcast, hopefully mine, and uh uh, you, you're you basically sitting there by yourself, and that is your time to cool down. It's decompression time. I used to think of driving home as my way of decompressing. Uh, it was, yeah, I worked in Oregon, uh, drove uh, with a window at least cracked, get some nice brisk air in, and, you know, it just... Uh, didn't matter what was on the road. I mean, I drove safely, of course, but, uh, you know, it, uh, it all became kind of tunnel vision after a while. And after I really got to know what, where I was driving, what I was doing, it, uh, was muscle memory, uh, to get home. Never did fall asleep, uh, on my way home. Did run into a couple near misses, uh, getting into, uh, the ruts, of rain uh you know it'd be raining really hard and getting into the ruts on the road and do a little hydroplaning but that's about as exciting as it ever got but then i get home i go into my apartment uh you know maybe turn on the tv if i'm in the mood uh i remember a friend of mine let me borrow the first season of 24 when it first got released on dvd and uh i remember sitting there thinking I'm just going to watch one episode and go to bed. And then the episode ends on a cliffhanger. And look at the clock. Ah, I've got a little time. And then watch another episode, and it ends on a cliffhanger. I'm like, fuck! Got to watch another episode. And then have, eventually have to force myself to go to bed. Other nights, I'd just be fooling around on the computer. Uh, at that time, I only had uh, DSL. And, uh, you know, I'd fool around on what was available on the internet at that point in time. Streaming services weren't available at that point in time. Uh, uh, porn websites were mostly pictures. I was single. Leave me alone. Um, and, uh, you know, there wasn't a lot on the Internet, but you could uh, you could read and, uh, you know, find out about things that were going on. And uh, it wasn't until after uh, 9-11 that all of a sudden all the, uh, the Internet took this huge leap. And I may or may not have done a few illegal downloads, but come on, everybody did it back then. Come, yeah. I was the first person that most people knew with a CD burner, but, uh, you know, let's not get too far into that because uh, I'm pretty sure that, the you know, some somebody um, in copyright law probably is probably developing a case on me uh, right now, but you know, other than that, I mean, uh, then you just pretty much you, you've decompressed in the car and you sit on the couch, watch a little bit of TV uh, and just finish letting your mind relax and you go to bed and whether or not the sun's peeking out or um, or it's still dark outside, you just make your uh, way into bed. Depending on how bad your night was and how bad you smell, you take a shower, of course. But you just mosey on over to bed and fall asleep. And that that's pretty much how my nights were. Uh, I 
wasn't the really the type of bartender that would try to bring home women as uh, uh, women every night, uh, mostly because I was shy. Still am, and uh, I, you know, I there's a lot of bartenders out there that uh, really took advantage of that whole situation, but I just couldn't do it because I thought I, I think I thought about it in too much of a business perspective. And, you know, so if I, you know, take home too many women, then either they've got to move on or I do. And I kind of need this job right now. And uh, plus, my friend Shannon will tell you, she'd be the first person to tell you, if a girl was interested in me, she'd have to hit me across the head with a two by four before I'd realize it. You know, if she, if she was like, all you have to do is ask, just say the word and I'll hop in the car with you. I wouldn't know it uh, just because I'm th- that clueless about women. I, like I've told you guys before, if a person comes up to me and says, I need some advice on women. My first thing I would say is sure. As soon as I get some, I'll let you know. Anyway, people, it is last call, last call for alcohol. So, uh, well, this is a virtual bar. So, uh, crack one open for yourself while you're sitting there, listening to the podcast. If you're listening to this into the bar, uh, in the bar that you work at, I know some of you do. Some of you have written me about it. Uh, you know, crack crack one open. Make sure that nobody can see you through the window. Um, like to thank all my listeners. Uh, I've been getting a lot of uh, great compliments, ratings on iTunes or Apple Podcasts. If you uh, would please get onto Apple Podcasts and give me a rating and a comment. I would be eternally grateful. You will be mentioned on the social medias. Uh, just remember, uh, visit www.heybartenderpodcast.com. Help support the show by picking up a t-shirt or a poker chip or whatever uh, suits your fancy. I got a small selection going on in there. You can also catch earlier podcasts from that uh, from that podcast uh, from that website. Wow, I'm amazed I can talk in, in some of these shows. Um. You know, if you have any drinks or you want to be on the show, uh, just let me know. I'd be more than happy to have you on the show for an interview. Just email me, dude, at Hey Bartender Podcast. That goes for you musicians, too. If you have a song that you are extremely proud of or want to get some airtime, email me, dude, at HeyBartenderPodcast.com. I love uh, promoting independent music. Uh, and, uh, uh, well, let's see. Oh, right. Uh, the sponsor. Uh, bartenderszonecoffee.com. Remember, go over there, uh, choose something from their big selection. They've got uh, whole bean coffee. They got gra- uh, standard ground. They got espresso. Um, they've got all sorts of different flavors. Also available in K cup form. Uh, just remember, go over there, use uh, promo code Hey Bartender at checkout, and you get twenty percent off your entire order. Anyway. So, uh, if you want to also get a hold of me, I'm also on Facebook.com and Instagram. You can reach me both uh, at both places. Hey bartender pot at Hey bartender podcast. Until next time, people. As usual, I just got to say what I always say because I think we could all use all of this right now, anytime, really. Lots of love, lots of sex, lots of happiness, and don't take any shit from anyone. Good night. What do you mean it's last go? I just got here!